examining the trees and, and looking up there at thousands of butterflies that are clustered up there in the trees. I, if you hear a little rustling in the leaves, it's butterflies. It's butterflies that are in the process of dying. They've, so here are these butterflies, spent two months or more getting to Mexico, only to die within days after having arrived. We're following the monarchs from Michigan all the way down to Michoacan in Mexico where they overwinter. And we're about halfway down now here in Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence, in many ways, is the epicenter of monarch butterfly studies. But there's a program now in Lawrence at the University of Kansas called Monarch Watch. And it's the premier uh, organization for the study of monarch migration and monarch populations and their conservation. We started Monarch Watch in 1992. At that time, it appeared that the number of monarchs would... And we have a big tagging program. The tagging program involves issuing up to 200,000 tags, maybe even 300,000 tags. I think we did that twice a year or two, people who are willing to tag. They, uh, we issue the tags, they sent the tags, and we show them how and give them directions on how to tag, catch and tag the butterflies, and record the data. So every butterfly has a coat that's tagged has a specific coat. So we can trace that back to the tagger. And once we trace it back to the tagger, then we try to find out the, the tagging information from the data sheet. And uh, in some cases, we notify the person who has reported uh, the tag to us. So the people who find tags are not associated with our program. So it's another way to reach out to people. And we go down to Mexico once a year. Uh, to buy tags from the people down in Mexico. There's only about one tag for every 20,000 butterflies, so again, uh, then we pay them $5 for every tag that is recovered. The way station program has grown nicely since we started in, in uh, April of uh, 2005, and now we have 948 way stations uh, registered and certified. In this past year, we have been certified, became a certified way station for Monarch Watch. A few months ago, we put in a, a new greenhouse to uh, have butterflies, and it's just a butterfly greenhouse where the butterflies can just stay and a bunch of kids can come in and look at all these little things, and it's just so much fun. We had about maybe 30 volunteers come out one day and we just hoed all of the ground. We planted a bunch of uh, different types of milkweed, butterflyweed, uh, rue, and just a bunch of uh, plants that will support all of the life cycles of a butterfly, whether it be a sulfur butterfly, a monarch, a swallowtail, a buckeye, whatever. When the flowers started growing, we went ahead and just constructed a greenhouse around it. And uh, what we did was we went out into our fields with a bunch of nets and we caught as many butterflies as we could. And we just stuck them all in there and then they reproduced to where there were eggs on the plants and caterpillars on the plants. And we also went out into the fields and found as many caterpillars as we could and just stick them on the plants. Kids who come out, I, I try and give them as much information as I can without boring them. I mean, uh, I want them to have fun out here, but I also want them to learn what what the butterflies are doing. That you know, they're migrating down to Mexico, and I just want them to learn and to understand what all is happening out here and the magnitude of what these butterflies do. It's a lot of fun. It was hard work, but <laughs> I say it was worth it. Monarch butterflies are really interesting in that they generate a response in the public that's very unusual. And it's just kind of one of our mega insects that uh, people can attach themselves to uh, because it's, it's just in your face. It's just uh, something you can, can see and appreciate. 